deck rabbit here. In the previous video we kind of set up the reading infrastructure for the disk and now um, we want to see what kind of method could be used to extract the track magnetic pattern bits. So let's have a look at some options. So harking back to the previous video we were able to actually have the um, sync signal and here's the data stream coming off the disk and this is reading one track and the, you can't really use this the oscilloscope to capture the full track um, content so this just shows a snapshot of the beginning of the um, of the data after the um, sync bit, um, signal goes to high on the rising edge of it but it's, it's not a solution to actually capture the data. So, and then we have our, um, our my old logic analyzer. And so I tried to connect this one in. So we have our machine one on timing and then um, pod once selected. And then we have single run uh, transitional and then we just had the um, triggering on the rising edge of the, of the index signal like just like on the scope and then we end up with this so it actually shows the same bit pattern as the oscilloscope basically shows but the problem is that this has a very limited amount of memory so when you um, actually um, increase the time by division to get a more data than the sampling period of course goes goes down and then it loses accuracy and then it starts losing bits and, and it's um, kind of useless so it has been I have concluded we can't use this to capture the streaming data oh the question is can we use this then to because the data is coming into the microcontroller so let's say we use the Arduino Mega to do the sampling so then I created an extremely short um, test code called sampling read data so basically it waits for a transition in the um, in the index signal and then it just starts to read as fast as it can now of course there are many different methods to get this much faster you can put in a, a set of assembly and all kinds of ways to make it but let's say that one just wants to do out of the box programming um, one wants to see the fastest sample rate and then I ran this all right. so after I sampled all the data then I just um, throw it out into the serial bus and then I can display it on the graph so anyway here we see the signal as captured on the graph and then if I run it again and we get that kind of a curve and then of course so this is indicative that um, there's like a timing delay when it, the, it, try, it um, identifies the index change towards when it's going to actually start capturing the data. Well, this is a fluke. And again. So I mean the the problem is with this data is that um, I would like to see a minimum of two captured um, state points per signal because in, in when you have only one then it's kind of like you know if it samples there and there and there and, and there then you know is it missing signals uh, you know, it's it, it's yeah it's it's hasn't got a high enough sampling rate in my opinion. So obviously there would be other solutions to solve this one could go to a faster microcontroller where you can actually increase the sampling intensity or we could look into other solutions. So anyway, moving on, so I switched to a new logic analyzer, USB based. I made a video about this if you want to see it. You can Go take a look at. It. So anyway, you know, moving on. So what I did is I looked at the low-level signal on the oscilloscope, and 
basically, so notice that it was um, one microsecond, so one just roughly, and then take that as the cycle time, and then one converts it to um, sampling time, so that's, um, or to frequency, so that will be what, one megahertz, and then one basically has a thumb rule that says 10 times that for sampling so if you have a um, cycle time or a cycle frequency of um, 1 megahertz then um, you can should sample with 10 uh, but anyways <laughs> since this is a <coughs> this little tiny module uh, when you're using um, a small number of channels you can actually get all the way up to 100 mega megahertz but anyway what I did is I said, okay, let's use um, 40 megahertz and take 20 um, mega samples. And what that leads to is the one. So here's the sync pulse. So I can take four, four full samples of the track, you know, like when it rotates 360. Now, of course, all the data in the track is not valid. Um, so you know, when you repeat it four times, you will see that there's variations in the in the data on the magnetic sectors that aren't used, for example, at the end of the uh, recording that was made. But anyway, if we um, zoom into one of these, and we take it from the beginning here. So here we see that we have the dropping edge on the sync pulse, then you see that we have these, which are pretty much the same that we were seeing on the oscilloscope. And um, the benefit of this is that you can actually save this to a export the data in um, different formats. Um, it's pro possible to process it in various different ways. So, the um, so I think I'm going to use this tool to capture the track data for now. And then of course, this is um, track data on one side. So this is just for one of the heads. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little rundown. So that will do it for this video, and um, <coughs> can continue in the next video looking more at the um, <coughs> interpreting the signals that we have actually been able to capture. So I'll um, see you in the next one.